I will say, all right, okay. Okay, so today is the last chapter and then last chapter and then we're gonna try to do the, what is called the chapter 16. For the additional topic for the uh, time series regression. So we actually, in here, we actually try to deal with the five different kind of uh, additional issues related to the time series analysis. So first one is the vectorial regression and the other one is a multi-period forecast and G DF GLS test and co-integration and auto regressive condition and heterosquare, which is the ARC model. So, and then these are the kind of use as we always use the, use the data set for the time series. Okay, so let's first, we can start with the auto regression. So this one is actually, so when you read the first sentence, sentence, VAR model is very useful when, when we have a kind of a data set and the time series data set, we are actually focusing on the predicting the multiple time series variables. So that means we have more than two time series variables that we want to predict within the single model. Okay. So that's the kind of things. So here, as you can see, these things. So we can try to try to estimate the, these two different variables in this case. And then to, to estimate the, these two outcome variable at the time period T, we actually using the some of the kind of uh, previous time lag, like a lag P kind of a variable for the X and Y. Each one actually had the same time lag period, like a lagged vector. What does that mean is that to estimate the t, uh, some of the some of the value for the time t period variable, maybe if we have a if we have a time lag length is a two, that means we actually using the t y t minus one and y t minus two for the estimate, estimate the y variable for the time t, okay? So that means we actually have a two time lag, which means the two time ahead kind of a measurement observation gonna be used to, under, to measure the uh, y, value, y value at the time t. Same for the time x. But in this case, what this one does mean means is the, as you can see here as an auto regressions, it actually means that the, these two actually kind of a co auto correlated, like a correlated each other. Cause as you can see here, to estimate the Y value at the time T, we use the both Y and X. And then the same for the X. Whenever we try to estimate the uh, X value at the time T, we also use the Y and X because these two variables actually correlated to together, like auto-correlated to across the time. And also at the same time, Y and T variable also correlated to one another. So they actually co-vary over time, okay? That's the how this one works. Okay, so, and then I'm gonna skip to this one. So in this case, like in this example, actually in here, we actually using the two time lag kind of a variable here. That's the reason why we have a T1 and T, T minus one and T minus two, which means we have a two time lag kind of a lag length. So that means to estimate the uh, GDP value at the time T, we actually looking at the observation value for the GDP for the T minus one and T minus two period. Okay, same for the T spread. Okay, so that's the kind of uh, uh, things that we have to do. And then uh, this R code actually illustrate, uh, R code actually shows about how we can try to, try to converting our data set for the what is called the TS object 
because the TS object is the, what is called the time series object that we usually use. And then we actually set up the T uh, start and end kind of a date, which is the quarter data, because that's the reason why we have a one and one through four, because we actually try to aggregate our time data set by quarter. Okay. That's the reason why we have a set up this kind of thing, because the frequency is a four, which means uh, every three months we have to measure that. And then we actually have a time spread series, which is the percentage differences of the interest rate. And then when we have a core efficient test like, uh, like this, because the reason why we have a one dash two is that this one actually represents like a T minus one and T minus two which is the we actually using the two time lag kind of variable. And then, and then we simply linear regression, then when we get the linear regression, we have a, this kind of a result. And then the coefficients test also says that there is a, also significant, and then we get the, this kind of a prediction equation result, okay? Actually, in the previous code is the, just kind of, a, we just elaborate about the whole process by using the LM function. But in R, there is actually a function that allows us to directly get the, all of the, these estimates and uh, these p test result by using the VAR function, bar function. And then, but to use the, this function, we actually set up the first window first, like how, how much kind of a, uh, of three months of thread, and then 10 months, 10 year, uh, like a year one to year 10, kind of a period gonna be uh, uh, set up. So we actually define the define the, these kind of windows. So when these windows actually moving slowly, we, every time we move the slowly, like every three months kind of a time, we actually calculate the, all the interest rate within the that wind that, that bandwidth like this, okay. And then when we get to the this VAR kind of analysis, we can directly get to the result like this. And then we can also testing about the adjusted R square about the how how this model can explain the variation of the each x like a T spread and GDP growth. So in this case, our model actually explained the T spread is much way better than compared to the GDP uh, uh, predictions. And also, as we always looking at the chapter 15 and 14, 14 and 15, we can to try to do the linear hypothesis test. So that means our time series data set changing is kind of a stationary or non-stationary kind of a things. And then also linear hypothesis test allows us to the, how this, how our model gonna be more fitted to predicting to the future value. So this kind of a significant test like an app test to set to the, this ANOVA test, uh, this app test also says about that at the level of 5%, we can actually says that the, uh, Tom spread has the power, okay? Prediction power to the GDP growth and vice versa. So actually using the term spread actually allows us to the predict the GDP growth. And also at the same time, GDP growth also allows us to estimate the T spread uh, changes, like interest changes over time. So both are, both, this one actually kind of a strong evidence about the both of them are the correlated to each other. And then this one is how VAR can be done. So it's just kind of conceptually try to do. I just try to explain that this conceptual kind of a framework, okay? So I also a little bit fail to understand the every details about the mechanism of the things to the how we can implement it, these kind of approaches. So in the next thing we also want to talk about is the what is called the iterated multivariate forecast using the iterated BAL. What does that mean is, 
okay, here is the kind of thing. So maybe we, if, if we want to estimate about the value for the T, T plus two time period, we actually try to conducting from the, from the by using the current T observation. How, what we can do is the, we actually try to VAR kind of a model in this case here, and then another VAR gonna be conducting the next one. So that's the reason why in here it says about the T plus one gonna be the kind of a immediate step to, to estimate the T plus two kind of a value. So our goal in this case is the, the value of the T plus two. But to estimate the, this value, we actually try to do the two time VAR anal regression, auto regression analysis in this case. That's the what iterated multi period, uh, period forecast is about. Okay. That's, I think this is it. Cause, uh, and then this, this one is the, that's the reason why we actually have an iterated kind of a condition. So, so whenever we have a predicted value, we actually try to do this kind of a prediction outcome. And then when we plotting the this one, we actually try to estimate the this kind of a uh I'll say about the uh, future estimation. So this blue line actually estimates about the the estimate value, and then uh this upper upper line is the upper value, and then a the lower line is the lower value. So this one is actually confidential invent improbable kind of estimate, and then these are the just kind of estimate kind of a prediction. So to estimate these things, we actually try to do in predict, what predicted value function do is that we actually using the two VAR kind of a process to estimate the, this kind of a trend line. So that's the how this one is about. And then the other thing we also have to do for the forecast is that what is called a direct multi-period forecast, which means we only using the this only single kind of a uh, kind of a estimation equation rather than the using to the y t and x t kind of a kind of a, uh, setting the equation instead of the these kind of settings, we just only combine these two these two things together and then we just only using the one single kind of a forecast kind of situation, okay? For the two, for the, in this case, like a two quarter kind of a variable, okay? So in, to do that, actually, what we actually try to set up is, uh, as you can see here, T minus two and T minus three gonna be set up because to estimate the T, we actually using the T, T minus one, T, T minus two, T, T minus three. So to estimate this value, we actually, actually to estimate this kind of a value, we actually using the this value as a kind of an intermediate step. To do that, we actually try to conducting the two VAR model by using the T minus three and T minus two value. And then the T minus two, gonna be the another immediate step to estimate the T minus one. And after that, to estimate the T value, we actually using the T minus T minus two and T minus one estimate VAR kind of analysis to estimate the final T values. That's the how directed forecast is about, okay? So it is a, a little bit more further, uh, more ahead kind of a time lag kind of analysis, I would say. That's what I understand. Okay. Yeah. So sorry. It is uh, like yeah. I, I think you're saying that we substitute uh, uh, the the Q Q three and uh, Q four for twenty twelve. So yeah, uh, yeah. I was wondering, is it that we are going to compute uh, that separately, or where are we going to get those values to substitute? We actually just a kind of a simply iterating the those kind of a analysis by using the just kind of a different time series kind of observation data, okay? So it is kind of a way to implementing the VAR model repeatedly, okay? We just learned the, these things multiple times. 
that's the how what I understand about this auto regression and the iterated VAR is about. Okay. The first one is that we just only using the single, uh, we only using the one time kind of a time rack, uh, one time kind of a analysis, like uh, things. But if we try to do the multi period kind of a predict, we actually repeatedly implementing the that VAR model approaches. That's the what I understand. Okay. All right. So let's move to the orders of the integration. So what this one is about is uh, actually this one is uh, just kind of a uh, we actually thinking about the deep, learning the differentiation twice. Because uh, whenever we have a very kind of a, this kind of a noise variable like this, maybe when we try to differentiation for the first uh, one uh, once, that actually allows us to the uh, kind of a kind of a very, very uh, kind of a moment of the change, right? Like this. More kind of a smooth line kind of things. And then uh, we, when we try to do the differentiation twice, we can actually get the, about the, what's the kind of a, uh, accelerated kind of a changes over time that actually have a, these kind of a linear type of the graph depending on the, uh, the equation. But whenever we have a two time lag kind of a situation, that means when we have a these kind of very noise kind of a situations, whenever we actually learn the these differentiation kind of approaches twice, which means that this what this delta means is we you actually thinking about the dy and dt and dt and d and this one is actually dt and just d. Okay, this one is just kind of a one time one time differentiation, this one is a twice. So that's the kind of a linear type of the graph is about. So whenever we have a, even if we have a very noisy kind of a uh, situations, whenever we can get the uh, differentiation or low kind of a uh, natural law kind of things, we can actually get to the more like a linear type of the uh, changes um uh, between the time period okay and then this kind of a uh, uh is there a total differentiation kind of stuff i think so yeah that's what i understand okay it is actually because when you're looking at the looking at the the equation at the top you know here Actually, this one is about the d y d t, right? And then this one is a beta zero, and then a t minus one is the d t minus one to d y. So this one can be actually explained about the d t at t y actually d t minus one d so that's actually twice differentiation kind of stuff to to get to the get to the value of the that kind of a linear kind of a regression line in this in here in this case actually the author is actually suggesting about the approaches to the this kind of a rock kind of approaches to to get the what is called the asymptotic line uh, changing of a percentage change of the variable. So at this this one actually try to represent about the percentage percentage change between uh, between the time period. Okay, and then when you plotting the that one, it looks like uh, these things. So each value actually represent about the, the percentage change of the that time moment. 
over time. And then uh, that one actually we can get to the this can be get to the this kind of smoothing, more like a linear type of the things. But whenever we try to differentiation to the this kind of a, a plot, and then uh, difference functions, we can actually get to the this kind of highly noise kind of things that represents about the actual changes of the inflation rate over time. When we go back to the actual diff, when you go back to the actual measurement of the differences, percentage change. That's what I understand, but I might be wrong. But that's the what I when I looking at the, this kind of a uh, uh, equation, it looks like a kind of a differentiation kind of approaches by using the t and t minus one kind of observation variable, and then by using these two time set like a t minus one and t we can actually get the get the this percentage change like a delta t and then and then delta y t over time so by using whenever we have a, this one is the repeatedly using these things we can actually get to uh, get to the line up to the top like this. And then whenever we going back to the, this kind of a different difference rate, we can actually get to the, this kind of a percentage change noise over time. And then uh, to testing about the, uh, about the, what is called the, uh, uh, this unit kind of a, what is called the unit leg length. Kind of attempt, yeah. Do you have any comments? No, I mean, uh, the unit root stuff. Huh? No, Which I mean, are you referring to the like the the test for unit root or something? Uh, okay. Uh, and then so in this case. Uh, like a DFGLS test for the unit root is uh, kind of like a, let me see. Uh, here is this one is another kind of a testing for the uh, for the stationary test for the changing between the time period over time. So how those are those changes either stationary or not to testing the those things we actually using the this dfgls test that's the what i understand and then uh, this by setting up the these kind of windows and then model trend and then lag max is the two we can actually testing the this lag test because we set up the two as a time lag we can get to the this kind of result and then, and then when we go down here, we can actually say about the, even the 10%, even the 10% level, we still have a DLS test is the minus 2.57, which means we cannot reject the null hypothesis is the non-stationary. So that means we can, we can say that the, our inflation rate is the non-stationary. Okay, because uh, that is uh, not that's the how this one is about. So that means our lag fun lag of observation, which is the previous time period, kind of observation really affects to the that inflation rate changes over time. That means we actually get to the these kind of a very noise kind of things, which means the non stationary non stationary type of the trend. So which is the there is a no kind of a clear or constant kind of a trend line can be cannot be drawn based mm -hmm. on the this kind of a highly functional kind of a trend situation. Okay. That's the chapter 16.2. And then a 16.3 is the core integration is the actually conceptually it is very simple. But 
the thing is how we can try to do the, these things is a kind of like a, a little bit little bit different types of the approaches. So every time we actually setting up the deep kind of a window and then I try to analyzing the how those between depending on the deep kind of window settings, how we can like uh, developing the our time series model like uh, finally like this. But what is the core core integration conceptually? is about is whenever we have a this in case of the this thread line and then a ten year ten year changes, those are the actually covalent covalent to one another, each other. Which means when we try to measure the term spread, which means the differences between the these two measurements, it actually very close to the zero. Like uh, as you can see the blue line. That percentage change is the very close to the zero or punctuated around the zero kind of a value. Then that actually indicating the strong result of the these two variable observation is actually call uh, changes together. Whenever they come, they one actually increases, the other one is also increased, as you can see here. One three months. Uh, three month no no ten ten year trend uh GDP growth is increases three month estimation also increases and then uh decreases is also gonna be decreases very similar kind of a pattern that's the how we can say about the core vary to one another and then uh, that is actually core integrated integrated creation kind of a situation to one another that's the how these things. Okay, so like the spread between the dam is the stationary. Yeah, yeah, spread is the stationary because it actually moving between the zero value because uh, that means their value and percentage by itself also the pretty the similar. At the same time, those changing trend is also very similar. That's the reason why when we try to looking at the, these kind of a differences, whenever we have a differences, it is really need, uh, it actually punctuated around the zero value that actually indicating about the core very core integrating situation okay so whenever we have uh, these kind of uh, things when we try to learn the this kind of linear analysis we uh, time series linear analysis linear regression we can also simply get the, this kind of a uh, simple regression uh, equation and then we, that allows us to the estimate the 10 year kind of uh, 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 interesting rate by using the three month because both these two actually co integrated together. So that means one variable can be estimated by using the, the other variable. Okay, that's the how co integration can be uh, useful when we have uh, this kind of a situation, okay? So, and then, and then to testing the, this kind of a correlate, core integration kind of things, there is actually testing for the, this kind of a Garner and Nui test, but I don't know how this test works, Nui West test works, but the thing is that this one actually uh, clearly tells us about the, as you can see, these kind of uh, situations, this can be done by the these the other kind of a variable kind of situations can be done to estimate the our the, our uh, ten year or three month kind of situation by using the this co integration mm -hmm. kind of a uh, variable. Okay. So you just understand about the core integration is about, and then whenever you have uh, this kind of a uh, situation or variable conditions, the only uh, all the uh, things that you can do is uh, just kind of learn the linear regression, uh, time series linear regression model, and then and then you can uh, figure you can you can find that the one variable can be predicted to the by using the, the other variable because both of them are the core vary over time. And then 
the last one is the what is called the volatility clustering and auto regression. This one is a kind of like a, one of the least one of the chapter that I can not understand at all. Yeah, I try to understand the, these kind of things, but the when I search the internet and then I try to figure out the, how this one is about the one thing that I can understand is is about is uh, when you're looking at the these kind of a uh, these kind of highly punctuated and then a highly uh noisy kind of a time series situation this arc and arc model can can do is uh, we can actually estimate about the these kind of a uh, noise trend line like this okay we can actually draw estimate that these kind of a red drawing lines and then based on the these kind of a drawing lines we can actually learn the another var or dy m l m kind of a analysis by using the these red line kind of a trajectory but to est to arc and dark model actually allows us to estimate that these kind of a Red, red, red line, red color line, kind of a uh, uh, time trend line, time series trend line, and then uh, using the these kind of a trend uh, situations, we can actually learn the additional model for the VAR and then GALNM, and then we can estimate the relationship between the time and the percentage changes. Okay, that's the how arc and arc is the conceptually can be done okay do you, do you understand what i mean yeah because uh what what this one actually clustering and auto regressive heteroscedicity means that uh, what the arc and arc again what the arc and arc actually do is uh rather than try to try to drawing the actual kind of a, this noisy kind of a line that is actually too complicated and computationally very intensive to estimate the, the low kind of a noisy kind of situation. So instead of the doing that, we actually try to try to using the, these kind of a red line, kind of a more simplified kind of a trend line situations. So that actually tends to be a little bit underestimate about the relationship in case of the, this highly peak kind of a situation like this. But the thing is that this one actually allows us to learn the, our VAR or maybe dynamic linear, uh, robust linear time series linear regression model more effectively. But anyway, this trend line still represents about the brief relay trendy trending line of the relationship between the percentage change and the date. So we can still can be figure out the general kind of a trend of relationships as a kind of a more like a approximate value in this case. Okay. Yes. Yeah, you can say that, but the thing is that the definition of the voluntary clustering and conditional heterostaticity is a kind of a little bit tricky concept. So, so I try to find out the, those what those things is about, but still mathematically it is very hard to explain to the what the conditional heterostaticity can be done and then how we can clustering the this voluntary. Actually, this red line is actually represents about the, what is called the voluntary clustering is about. So whenever we have a small bandwidth kind of a situations and then uh, by using the within the this bandwidth we can actually estimate that these kind of a red line things by you would by having the these kind of a very small wind with with the window and then this one actually keep moving and then whenever it moving all the way down to here we can get to the this kind of a little bit more approximate simplified kind of a trend line and then this trend line actually allows us to 
the non the additional kind of a regression analysis more effectively, and then I estimate the, those kind of a trending line a little bit more intuitively. That's what I understand. So, uh, no, it's I a bit, think, uh, yeah, a little complicated, but uh, I think uh, you 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 touch on the main uh, concept, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, because it is still 16.4 is a kind of a still, I, it is very hard for me to understand the why these things can be done and then uh, how we can try to, how we can try to use and use the, these kind of things for the more additional kind of auto regression kind of approaches. But anyway, that's the how, how things is about theoretically. <laughs> so, uh i i think that this is the end of end of the, this chapter and then uh, this one is the end of the end of the hour book <laughs>